Welcome to Global Retail TV. I'm Jalal Jihazi, and today we are in Casablanca, Morocco, for a new episode of The Retail Show. We'll be covering for you today the retail sector and how it has evolved in time. From traditional markets that has been here for centuries, and that will make you travel back in time, to new infrastructures with high international standards. We'll talk to some of the global retailers and global brands that managed to penetrate the Moroccan market and that made a complete change of the scope of the retail image here in this country. Welcome to Morocco Retail Evolution. At the crossroad of the African and the European continent, the Kingdom of Morocco has been for centuries a meeting point for the Arabo-Islamic culture and trading. As Sawira developed into one of the major intellectual centers in the Islamic world and was vital link in the trading routes between Andalusia and the Middle East as well as Morocco and the Sahara. The kingdom's trading history started many centuries back with the city of Mogador being the heart of trading of all imports and exports to the country. agriculture to fishing and handmade products. The Moroccan trading culture was very strong and emphasized by the people's diversity and origins. The unique products were exported globally and distinguished Morocco from the different offerings at that time. In 1492, Jewish families driven from Spain entered Morocco and developed a trading base here in Asoera that lasted for centuries and served all regions and cities of Morocco. In 1062, under the watch of Yusuf Nutashfi, the Kasba and the Red Wall were constructed in one of the most fascinating cities of the world. This city under Al Muravid grew into an important, splendid Islamic city of commercial power and wealth. We are in Marrakesh, in the heart of Jamal Fna, this traditional market that was founded in 1070 by Al Muravid dynasty, and the city fortress stone, and closed by the historical, famous Kutubiyya Mosque. This market was found as the city hub and the country hub for many years, and it's still the place not to miss when visiting Morocco. Products made by all artisans and all craftsmen from all around the country are brought here to be purchased by local visitors and as well by tourists. Walking in the city markets makes you travel back in time. The products that used to be made by Moroccan craftsmen 900 years ago are still made here. The knowledge have been transferred from a generation to generation like home furniture, decors, lighting, leather, clothing and jewelry. Each region of Morocco has been known for unique products offering and channeled back to the different countries by road and sea. Until today, weekly traditional souks are still taking place, mainly in rural areas to sell or purchase product needed by Moroccan families. Casablanca, the largest city of Morocco. This is the place where modernity started in the country. Prince Moulay Abdullah Avenue was the heart of modern luxury shopping. This was the only place in the country where Western luxury products are offered as premium shopping destination. This icon district has been renovated recently by the local authorities to give it the value that it used to have 40 years back.
Nowadays, home decors and furniture are very important elements for Moroccan families. This retail sector is mainly driven by traditional markets that represent more than 70% market share. Fir Omar is the largest home furniture fabrics of the country and the distribution hub for all regional traditional resellers. We have visited one of the oldest home fabric distributors in Dar Omar to talk about the importance of this traditional market. Bonjour, euh, bienvenue chez Tessilarte, Casablanca au Maroc. Euh, Hello, welcome to Tessilarte Casablanca in Morocco. It is a company that has been created since 1992, but the owners are the fourth generation which is in the fabric and in the furnishings. Who says fabric and furniture is Deb Omar, where it all began, that is to say, the lungs of Morocco. This is where it all started. This is where goods are channeled for other cities in Morocco and to Africa as well. It was the lung of Morocco. When it comes to fabric and furnishings, we definitely go through Derb Omar. We always went through Derb Omar and it was the only important furniture market in the country. Any kind of fabric from canvas to silk, velvet, it was always the must place to go to. Even now, the market has shifted to another area of Casablanca with the city developments. Things and habits have changed, but Derbomar is still the essential point to buy your fabric. First, we come to look at what is in the Der Omar market before going to another store and to another part of the city. In the most luxury area of Casablanca, we have visited Sketch Design, a home furniture retailer aiming to improve the image and the offers of this retail sector. When it comes to home furniture, we are used to see Moroccan consumers shopping typically from a traditional market and from the hands of craftsmen. How do you describe the shopping switch to a more modern furniture segment? It is true that the local market is still largely dominated by small craftsmen shops, uh, as they typically enjoy a price advantage. However, we are seeing a progressive shift toward more structured offers, mainly driven by the advert of online shopping um, and an improved offer from modern retailers like ourselves. Our company has started only three years ago and we're gaining market share by the day as customers enjoy um, our varied offer and uh, our customer service. What differentiates sketch design from the traditional furniture market and how do you drive a good consumer experience at your shop? Well, customer service, professionalism and care are at the center of everything we do. On that front, our offer is far ahead of everything that a traditional retailer can provide. Having a truly respected brand with a recognized quality and a reputation for always delivering a good product at the best of prices allows us to reach higher sales volume every month and therefore become increasingly competitive on prices. The continuous battle for customers' attention has shifted from physical shops to online e-commerce throughout last year. And on that digital front, traditional players have been uh, much slower to adapt, leaving a giant hole for us to expand in. Though attracting new customers is important, the rising competition in the e-commerce space has emphasized the value of keeping existing customers. When customers shop at our store or on our website, they know that they are dealing with professionals and with, pr with prices now very close to those they can find with traditional competitors, their choice is evident. The city of Casablanca is changing. 
The modern infrastructure and the city dynamics are helping more retailers to invest here. In Greenworks Pescura, 10 kilometers east of Casablanca, this new urban area of Casablanca region is now home of new luxury property projects. One of the largest retailers in the home furniture decided to open two stores, and one of them is a new modern furniture concept. So our group has been one of the key players of the Moroccan industry with over 45 shops across the country. Mobilium is the latest concept uh, that unifies uh, a traditional and modern style uh, for the Moroccan customer uh, and of course other people. Uh, our stores and layouts uh, and staff competencies create uh, an outstanding uh, retail experience and the Moroccan consumer habits has changed during the past 15 years that has helped us uh, uh, adapt our products and services to meet those changes. In the heart of the modernity, the country is so attached to its traditions and the know-how passed on from a generation to generation. From the hands of craftsmen, handmade products are designed with a deep dedication and persistence. This is a story of a three generations retailer's success story. Benson Shoes is a company specialized in manufacturing. Goodyear welted man shoes. This company is a result of three generations experience. My grandfathers were both in shoe business, making babouche, Moroccan babouche, and casual shoes and uh, classic shoes. Benson Shoes itself was created in 1996. Uh, myself, I started my experience with my father, which created the company in 1963 and started to make military booze uh, and other military items, textile and leathers. Benson Shoes has, I would say, um, some strengths comparing to the, uh, comparing to the competition. First of all, is the Goodyear welted, which is uh, hard work, which is a process coming from England. And we do our best to make it as it is nicely made in Northampton. Um, the second strength is our closure to Europe. I mean, for our exports, it's much, much more practical to export from Morocco. The transport is a short time, uh, short time, we have a short time to deliver the shoes. Um, comparing to collections, as we create our own collections, we do our best to try to follow the, um, uh, the fashion in Europe in general, in England in particular, and make from our shoes something unique, at least in our country. And that's why we decided maybe 15 years ago, no more, sorry, yeah, 16 or 17 years ago to establish our brand in Morocco as a brand, Benson Shoes, with uh, this particular combinations, the combination between our experience as a shoemaker and our experience as company dealing in retail business. And I mean by that that we bring to our this special experience, we give them more flexibility comparing to uh, the way we deliver our shoes, the way we ensure their um, um, uh, service in our shops. As, at the moment you go inside, you feel that you are in a shoemaker place, not only selling shoes. We do our best to give you the best service, to finish your shoes, to clean them, to make high shine, to change coloring. We do custom-made shoes, 
You can choose your own color. And we go from a natural leather to make what we call a patine, nice patine, to give the color you wish. We even make, um, we have a, a special corner for, a, for a custom made shoes. We give you the possibility to buy your shoes, but with your taste. Change the last, change the sole, change the color of the thread, change the finishing of the shoe, make high shine, make high shine. You love shoes, only matte aspect, we can do that. I mean, that's for me the best service we can offer to our customers. And that's the way we try after these uh, years of experience to place our brand as a brand um, more and more exclusive and more and more uh, uh, Moroccan as brand. These shoes are made, these shoes are made with 100% of Moroccan hands. And honestly, those people are my proudness. Without them, we could not, uh, I mean, have done this nice job. And we could not get the recognition of our customers, which is for us the best uh, result we could get during those uh, last years. For me, the customer experience in our shops is a relationship built over time. It begins with the customer's visit and continues with purchase advice, choice of models, and later the, sh the shoe care. Over time, we sometimes receive a client for a simple hello or advice. This is what I ultimately call the foundation of a beautiful relationship client. In all the shops of the network in Morocco, we have a patina and glassage workshop. This allows our customers to choose, for example, a customized and handmade coloring. Every country has something unique. Morocco is very known by argan oil, which is produced from argan tree. Behind me here, you can see the tree that's actually spread around thousands of acres in the region of Asawira, all the way down to the region of Agadir. Let's meet some of the companies that managed to produce this oil and make it a success story to the retail. Botanica Marrakech, so it was created, the brand was created now from seven years ago. It was a member of the IRCOS Laboratory, where we are today. Uh, laboratory was based in uh, Marrakech, with 22 years of history. Where the main activity of the laboratory is to create the white labeling for our customers. And uh, the founder, so Dr. Khalid Bitar, uh, once we create for the other brands some brands, he said, OK, we need to create our proper brand. So Botanica Marrakech was born from this constat. Uh, what is Botanica Marrakech? It's the only brand in the world who can use the extraction of the leaf mixed with the argan oil. So it's a huge brand because uh, you have more than 120 different SKU. Uh, you have eight different lines, faces, hair care, men's, also for the baby or for the sun care. Uh, 38 uh, products are totally eco-cert uh, or organic. You have also all the products are vegan and we have also uh, all the products halal, because we export a lot of our products in the Middle East part. It's one of the biggest business that we have for Botanica Marrakech today. Uh, Botanica Marrakech in the world, we can, you can find our products in Europe, in Paris, also in Spain, Portugal today, Switzerland also. We will open a store in uh, Japan uh, soon, normally starting next year. Uh, in Morocco, we just start to launch some uh, huge uh, stores. Since the COVID happened, we decided to concentrate all your activity in, in Morocco. So we opened a huge store in Casablanca. So we opened uh, the huge store in, in Casablanca in the 22 of uh, January. We decided to focus and to open our biggest store in the world in Casablanca. So it's a store where you have 170 meters square. Uh, he's in the center of Casablanca. So all the Casablanca people can come and have a visit in, in this store. You will have a unique customer experiences in this store. 
You will have very soon also uh, like a spa. So you will have some spa. You can have some massage directly in, uh, in, in this uh, store. Uh, all the, the concept of the, spa, the store, sorry, it's uh, with the wood. So very natural. All the products that you can find in the store are all made in a natural and typical product. In Marrakesh, Glee Natural is another Moroccan cosmetic retailer that has succeeded with his e-commerce platform to reach local and international customers. Welcome to our factory shop. Glee Naturals is all about promoting ancestral uh, Moroccan beauty rituals. Uh, we like to keep things simple and transparent, and we believe that purity is the ultimate uh, luxury. So we use uh, natural ingredients, mainly found in, in Morocco, to bring outstanding products that are effective, luxurious, and safe for our customers and the planet. Our products are distributed uh, to hotels, spas, uh, and beauty clinics, both locally and internationally. We've seen in Morocco a big change in how actually retailers are implementing e-commerce. And one of the brands that actually use e-commerce is yours, is Glee Natural. Can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit how you implemented the e-commerce and what's the impact of this channel on your business? Okay, so e-commerce was um, a game-changing uh, for our marketing strategy. So um, we created our online uh, shopping platform four years ago. Uh, to increase our brand aware awareness and um, gain more market shares and increase our revenues. So I can say that the global shutdown due to the COVID-19 pandemics urges us to focus more on the online side of our business uh, to offer an enjoyable and yet safe uh, shopping experience to our customers. Now our online sales uh, represents more than 35% of our total revenues and we are planning to increase it to reach 40, 45% by the end of the year. To understand the impact of the e-commerce on the retailer sales and business opportunities in Morocco, we have visited Vantage Payment Systems, the leading online e-commerce solutions integrator that helped many retailers moving from a physical shop to a secured online payment website. We have, uh, we have noticed a tremendous growth in the e-commerce sector in Morocco. Uh, in the last uh, five to seven years, uh, uh, we have noticed that uh, there is a new commerce to the business. So uh, uh, there is uh, international operators that came into Morocco and started their business in Morocco. At the same time, there is uh, Moroccan retailers who have adopted an e-commerce strategy and they started their e-commerce uh, business uh, online, of course. Uh, so we've seen both models. Uh, we've seen the traditional businesses also adopting an e-commerce strategy. Uh, we believe this is just the beginning. I think the opportunity is still tremendous uh, because there is the, uh, the, the e-commerce segment that uh, Morocco, Moroccan, which means services that, and products that are sold in Morocco for Moroccan consumers. But there's also tremendous business opportunity to sell outside of Morocco. As you know, e-commerce has no boundaries, there's no any limitation uh, or geographic limitation. And I think uh, Morocco uh, can have tremendous opportunity to export products and services uh, to international markets. Uh, these could be markets that are partners of Morocco already, in a traditional way of partnering up, but it could also be going to, to new markets. And I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, Morocco is uh, very advanced in, uh, in the tourism area, you know, uh, today uh, if you want to buy, uh, you know, a vacation in Morocco, you go through an operator like Booking or Expedia or others. Based, uh, based outside of based Morocco. Based outside of Morocco. Yeah. Uh, why not go in directly to, uh, exi to, to uh, local platforms that can basically sell that, uh, that vacation? Uh, so we've seen a lot of this transformation in different sectors that are strategic for Morocco. And I think uh, this is just the beginning. I think uh, in the next uh, uh, five years, we're going to see an acceleration, uh, especially 
uh, that uh, the last uh, COVID crisis has already accelerated this transformation, where actually we have seen new businesses evolve and show up out of nothing. You know, there's uh, some auto entrepreneurs that showed up in 2020 that did not uh, know anything about e-commerce, but started selling their products and services online because of the, the crisis that happened. And uh, the Moroccan consumer uh, has adapted to that quickly. So uh, I think this, uh, this is the beginning, and I think we're going to see uh, transformation. Uh, at the same time, there is, uh, uh, there is a, a huge uh, uh, transformation around uh, uh, shopping. Uh, you know, traditionally, Morocco is a traditional market. Uh, Morocco has been trading with a lot of partners traditionally, but now we've seen this trade evolve to a virtual trade. Uh, and even the Moroccan consumer is now much more comfortable with online shopping, with the online experience, uh, uh, with the uh, different payment methods available and security of the payment methods. Uh, we are more uh, comfortable with taking out our uh, bank card and using it on uh, uh, sites uh, that, that could be guaranteed uh, uh, by some type of insurance or some type of uh, security. So I think the, the sector uh, will live what we call the hockey stick. You know, it's, it's just about to take off. And uh, I believe that there will be a lot of investment in this, in this sector going forward. Is the telecom infrastructure um, one of the elements actually contributing to this, uh, to this new evolution? I, absolutely. I think uh, uh, access to, to the internet and the telecom infrastructure today, we have a very good coverage in the country. Uh, most households have access to the web, either via uh, 4G, 5G, or, uh, you know, la DSL. Uh, smartphones as well, you know, uh, we have uh, very high uh, uh, smartphones uh, ownership and penetration. In, in penetration in Morocco. Uh, and uh, the, the, the percentage of uh, people who have access to uh, banking services uh, or payment cards, uh, we are about 76% one of the highest in, in, in Africa. Uh, I think we are second to South Africa, if I'm not mistaken. So these factors put together with the, with the new uh, development model that hopefully is going to double uh, the, the, the household income in the next 10 to 12 years, I think we will see some, some amazing opportunities. Uh, is the e-commerce, uh, you, you mentioned earlier something about the, uh, the Moroccan products being actually sold elsewhere and that the e-commerce is facilitating that. Um, which, which basically sectors uh, are uh, key into actually this e-payment? Well, uh, artisanal? Yes, uh, we've seen a lot of, uh, uh, you know, handmade stuff being sold uh, outside of Morocco through platforms uh, that either exist or that were put together to, to serve these communities. Uh, there are platforms that were uh, that put uh, that were put together to serve uh, some cooperatives uh, that uh, basically uh, bring this Moroccan product uh, to the international scene, uh, and there has been some good success stories there. Uh, but as I said, this is just the beginning. I think uh, uh, Morocco will have has a good strategy to export uh, product artisanal products. Uh, and, and beyond that, I mean, uh, uh, Morocco is known for uh, some oils uh, that are very, uh, uh, you know, unique to the country. Uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, or parapharmaceutical products that are uh, based of uh, argan oil or uh, some other types of uh, prickly, oils. Like, like prickly pear, prickly pear, for, for example. example. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think there's a focus on, on that. Uh, there are some marketplaces that were open to uh, market these products, uh, uh, and I think uh, this will be uh, this will help uh, bring, you know, together some uh, some uh, some uh, areas in Morocco that don't know this commerce yet, but they have been approached to to start selling their products outside of the country. Okay. Um, 
how VPS uh, contributes on a daily basis into this digital retail mm -hmm. transformation of the country? Well, we, we, we like to think that we do our part to help uh, this sector you know, get bigger. And uh, I'm very proud when I uh, see that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, you know, uh, a merchant in the deep mountains of Morocco being able uh, to sell uh, a rug or you know, uh, something that they made with their hand on a platform where we basically powered the platform with the payment uh, uh, methods. Uh, which we have done already in many instances. Uh, the advantage we have is that uh, we're integrated with some international platforms and we offer turnkey solution uh, to these merchants. In a sense, we also help them uh, put their product on, on, uh, on, uh, on the shelves, on the online shelves. So we are uh, 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 integrated with some platforms, international platforms. First of all, international payment platforms, which allows the transactions to happen, and also technology marketplaces that help uh, these merchants expose their product. Okay. So we provide the turnkey solutions, uh, and beyond that, uh, we basically accept multitude of, uh, of uh, payment methods from uh, cards to mobile to uh, cash sometimes, as you know, uh, we're still a cash society. And uh, I think cash is still dominant in transactions. We have uh, a network of partners where we can uh, complement the transaction uh, via cash. So basically, you, you, you give more choices to Absolutely. any shopper, uh, either to pay online uh, using their bank cards or, yes. or to pay cash at a certain pay point. Yeah, of course. Okay. We, we, we encourage paying uh, online because of uh, different factors. Uh, traceability, you know, uh, uh, security. I mean, uh, today we're proud to see that there's not much fraud in uh, in in this uh, this uh, value chain. Uh, I think uh, payments online are secured uh, pretty much 100% today. Uh, we uh, we don't see much fraud, so people are more encouraged to pay online. We don't like to see cash circulating a lot. I think there's a cost to that, so we we encourage you know a virtual process uh, end to end. Um, well, the last question, but not the least, um, is it difficult to integrate an online payment to any retailer's, uh, retailer's website? It's as easy as one, two, three. It takes, it could take 24 hours and we can have uh, merchants up and running. Uh, really, it's, uh, the, all the technology is already developed. It's plug and play now. Uh, it's just, there is some administrative work. Uh, basically, the merchant has to provide some paperwork. But beyond that, the integration, uh, or, or, you know, uh, putting together the, the payment page is becoming very easy for us. We, we do it every day for our customers. Uh, within 24 hours, it can be operational. As a modern model for the region, Morocco has been ranked recently the most safe country in Africa by global finance. Under the guidance of King Mohammed VI, the country's strategy to bring foreign investment into the country and simplifying the business opportunities has helped Morocco attract many global brands, which improved the lives of all Moroccans and brought employment and business opportunities to the country. have met Aradai Capital, an investment company specialized in modern retail and owner of many malls and shopping centers in Morocco to discuss the retail evolution. As one of the Moroccan key retail players in the country, how do you see the country's evolution for the past 15 to 20 years? It's a good question. Uh, the country's retail landscape has changed significantly uh, over, over the past couple of decades. I'd say we've had a few shifts of ground in, in, in the area in, in, in a, uh, on a few levels. First of all, uh, we're no longer dealing with uh, as much, I would say, uh, 
uh, traditional retail and there is a major shift into modern retail. And when I say modern retail, it's not only about the retail, uh, the real estate infrastructure part of the retail, but also the retailers. Uh, we've had a number of franchisees that have entered uh, or a number of franchises that have entered the country through their franchisees. We've had a number of brands that have come in to establish operations directly in the country. And so that has significantly impacted as well the real estate side because traditionally we had retail that invested in its own real estate while with the arrival of these uh, franchisors and these operators, uh, the commercial real estate industry was born itself, I'd say, in the past 15 years. And as you probably know, not even in Europe, it's a very old industry. I mean, it started maybe back in the U.S., but, but it's, it's interesting to see how that shifted very quickly in Morocco and how we've, we've had the birth of this, of this new industry. When you look at some of the studies, Nielsen's and others, you, you'll see that it's still maybe, what, 85, 80 to 85% traditional retail, especially when you look at the, the, the food retail, it's still very much traditional. So there is a major, major opportunity as modern retail gets critical size for it to be able to be more competitive pricing wise and to actually acquire a lot more uh, market share. And that creates an interesting opportunity because you look at the rest of the world and everyone is saying, hey, we're going overboard with retail and we're cutting back on development. But when you look at a country where modern retail has not yet penetrated very well, you still have a development opportunity in a world that is basically shutting down and going into more uh, e-commerce and other aspects. So I'd say to, to sum it up, because that's the question we get most of the time. Well, so what's going to happen with the e-commerce? Are you going to get impacted? How are you going to get impacted? We probably from a retail square meters per thousand capita, for example, we're probably 20 times what is available in Europe. We're probably five times where uh, countries like Tunisia even uh, are. And so we're far behind in terms of brick and mortar infrastructure for retail. And so I'd foresee that the same development we've seen in the last 10, 15 years is gonna continue and that's going to be on a couple fronts because we're not only talking about shopping centers or retail parks we're talking about strip malls community malls little plazas uh, infrastructure of retail that's basically mixed with the new office infrastructure uh, entertainment as well entertainment yeah. as well but yeah, but, yeah. but what's happening is also very interesting because the country is going also into a shift of what the uh, residential development and the suburbs are being created. And these suburbs are not being created at the same image of what the cities have been traditionally. Let me very, be very specific about what that means for retail. Traditionally, city urban development has been that retail is basically the ground floor of every building. And so you'd have high street retail development happening. But with the suburbs being born in most of these cities, these suburbs are created as pure residential developments which then require new retail infrastructure to actually go with it. So to that integrate. Creates, integrate. Exactly. Yeah. So that creates yeah. new opportunity for retail to come in. Absolutely. Uh, your shopping malls are in the hearts of key Moroccan cities and, and, and they are all over the country. And we, can, we can mention Tangiers, Fez, uh, Marrakesh. This has a major impact on the local communities and, and direct jobs and the lives of many Moroccans, uh, doesn't it? Well, of course it does and on many levels and aspects that we don't even uh, see. I think today we're up to maybe 20 or 22 cities where we have assets. And so the advantage that we have is that we have assets in uh, million population cities and 70,000 population cities. So we're the smaller and the bigger ones. And so we're, we're able to assess the purchasing power in many of these cities, understand also the impact of um, our retail there, as you know, uh, we're, we're backed up by our partnership with La Belle Vie, uh, a listed company here, which is the uh, sole franchisee or the exclusive franchisee of the Carrefour Careful. brand. And the advantage we have with the Carrefour brands is we have the Carrefour Market, Carrefour Gourmet, uh, the Carrefour, Hyper. the Hypermarket, as well as Atacada, which is the discount uh, model. So 
with these four, uh, uh, I'd say, different models, we're able to penetrate different assets, different neighborhoods. Um, and in terms of impact, again, I go back to the figure of, well, how does it help to have product go through um, a modern retail infrastructure? Well, one of the key impacts is on the industry. You know that when the industry sells into the traditional market, they have absolutely no feedback of knowledge on when the product was consumed or where the product was consumed. While when the distributor goes back to a modern mm. channel, they are able to trace mm. the actual sale and consumption of their product, which gives them essential feedback in terms of industrial production. Mm. So mm. industrial players have actually everything to gain mm. from moving their distribution from the non-structured awesome. retail to the traditional to, 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 to modern. So that's, Forget the impacts of jobs. Forget the impacts of uh, the fact that these jobs have, uh, you know, these are basic elements. I know we're, we're, we're stopped dealing with some of this stuff in all over the world, but uh, all declared employees, social security, benefits of pay, things like that. When you talk about these small communities, these small markets or small cities that we're in, these are very important. Uh, health and safety measures, uh, uh, making sure that uh, the product is uh, logistically safe from A to Z and the logistics infrastructure, the, the, exactly whether uh, from, a, from a cool chain product or from uh, a, a, a other health and safety aspects. And so uh, I, I can't begin to tell you the list of impacts uh, uh, that, uh, that you can see from the penetration of, uh, of this modern retail into the cities. And we're constantly working on, on additional impacts. You know, we're, we're working on our own um, ESG charts from uh, the environmental impact and you know everything that we know is becoming important whether it's for the consumer whether it's for the investor and uh, obviously for for our environment plan as well is becoming part of what the country has been introduced to the the retail so i'd say we're we're very proud of what we do there uh, the, in in reality for a developing nation where retail infrastructure is young where commercial real estate in general is young. Uh, we've done a, a, a major leap in the past decade and that's still continuing. So, so if, we are, if we are an international brand and, and, and mainly the brands that comes from the Western side, um, we see a more influence of brands coming from the East and, uh, and a lot of brands they would like as well to penetrate the local market. Uh, I mean, as a key player locally, what? What's your insight based on those brands and the actual brands that already came from either the Middle East or either from far Asia? Um, what's the right way uh, for them to do it? And, and, and how your structure, for example, today can support a brand that decides to come tomorrow to, tomorrow to invest in Morocco? Good, good question. Uh, one of the key, or I'd say there are two probably main hurdles to penetration of the uh, market in Morocco. The first one is being able to achieve critical size very quickly. Uh, the development in retail, if, if it's done in an organic matter, may take several years to get to that volume critical size to be able to turn it into Profit. the positive and, uh, and profitable PNL. Having a partner like us in 20 different cities can provide accelerate. Exactly, an acceleration of access where we say, okay, we're going to launch your product very quickly into, into uh, uh, most of the country uh, and accelerate the development plan. Second one is the development of the operating partners and the local franchisees in the country that has been going on in the last 10, 15 years has now provided for very good operating infrastructure that any foreign partner can partner with, work with, whether through JVs or franchise programs, or and, and, and that can now be done quickly. It would have been very difficult 10 years ago. Any brand looking at coming into the country 10 years ago would have struggled with the human resources aspect. While today you could find several good partners who can come in very quickly and, and share the knowledge that they've had on the logistics side to, 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 to that partnership. The, one of the mistakes I've seen happen in the past for some of the brands, um, and, uh, and I'm not saying it's, it, it, maybe mistake is not the right word, but one of the challenges I've seen 
is that when they go through a master franchisee in one of the Middle East countries, for example, then Morocco, given that the culture is a little bit disconnected from the Middle East, and more similar to European lifestyle shopping, European lifestyle demand for products and things like that, it gets caught up a little bit in the purchasing centers and the infrastructure and logistics that are happening in the Middle East. And so things as simple as, is it the right boxes of sizes of uh, you know the, the, the same style or not that they should be shipping to Morocco becomes a little, well, that's what they're shipping to the Middle East. So Morocco is going to get what they're getting in the Middle East, which is not what the Moroccan consumer wants. Um, and so from that perspective, my advice has always been for these brands to try to penetrate directly or at least exclude the Moroccan platform from the Middle East uh, infrastructure. And especially maybe also try to use Moroccan platform as a position or a point of entry for Western French speaking countries in Africa, which also have that same connection, the European connection, uh, uh, similar to, to, to Morocco. And from that perspective, even from a human resources perspective, even from a logistics perspective, it makes more sense to do it that way, in my view, than uh, through the Middle East. But it is prime time to do that. And I know in the current world where we live, everybody's like, well, no, but yeah, brick and mortar, we're closing that. We're doing e-commerce. Well, let's not get started on why the logistics and, and, and numbers do not support the e-commerce expansion in these countries yet. These countries, including Morocco, are still far behind in the need for brick and mortar and brand penetration and brand equity in these countries before they can move to the e-commerce. So we're in a unique position. I think a lot of the brands who are closing down or that are closing down stores in Europe should be thinking about opening down in, in countries in like ours. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Your company has been introduced recently uh, as an IPO last December. And congratulations for that. Thank you. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that and how that's going to drive RDI Capital to to move ahead uh, with the future of retail in the country? Thank you. It's. Uh, I think we're we're a humble small player in uh, in a, in the country and by. Uh, measure of our size, we're still not comparable to the larger, I would say, commercial real estate vehicles that you find in Europe. Um, but the reality is the commercial real estate business is one that consumes a lot of capital, uh, whether you're doing retail or healthcare or logistics or uh, these are typically sizable investments and they require large balance sheets. And in the life of any real estate uh, yield vehicle, at some point, you need to be able to achieve the size to be efficient and for your economics to fall together. And that size would not have been possible for us and wouldn't be possible for us if we don't actually float the company and if we don't actually uh, uh, IPO it and have capital market sources now of funding that are available to us. Uh, so for sure, that will accelerate our growth. Uh, obviously, it's not the only reason why our growth will be accelerated. It's because there's a lot more demand in country for new, whether it's development or repositioning existing real estate. And so our pipeline is very strong. And that's the other thing that our shareholders have felt has given us the urgent power to, to go and, uh, for the IPO. Our IPO was mostly cash in. So it's mostly money for growth. And we've announced some large transactions already after the IPO, which means we pretty much spent everything that we already assembled in the IPO. So watch that space. We may come out soon again asking for more, <laughs> for more, more money, money, for yeah. more money to, to, to spend. Um, but I think you're right. The, uh, the real estate investment trust industry or the REITs industry is starting. REIT legislation just came out in country uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, so this is the time when we are expecting a lot of growth. A lot of sale and leasebacks as well. A lot of people who are holding real estate on their books and balance sheet today are finding the benefit of selling uh, and separating the operating company from the real estate. And so we will definitely benefit from that. Casablanca is one of the major economical hubs in Africa. With regional headquarters of many multinationals, an international financial institution based here to drive the daily operations 
in the northern and western African countries. The area of Sidi Maruf is the home of many key businesses, from services to IT and aeronautics. Tecno Park is the Silicon Valley of Morocco. Leading the country's dynamics with startups and young entrepreneurs reshaping the country's innovation in many sectors, including retail. With more than 1,000 companies and 6,000 engineers based here, this was the first step from many Moroccan success stories. Today, I will introduce to you two companies that contributed to Morocco retail success with 100% made in Morocco solutions. Retail is one of the key strategic employment sectors of the country. Based on your experience, what are the challenges that retailers face today regarding the human capital and finding the right talent? During the past few years, we have seen an increase in retail recruitment led by the arrival of new players into Morocco. So we have been requested for qualified selected talent. On the other hand, the recruitment process takes longer than usual due to the high turnover retail sector. Therefore, the company must react fast. And more than that, to be proactive, they should have a pool of pre-selected candidates at hand. How does your unique solution help retailer today from the selection part to, uh, to, to placing the right candidates, either at the shop um, or at the management level uh, in retail? Uh, before creating CV Passer, I was a recruiter myself for many years and we have taken in consideration all the challenges that any retailer recruiter faces on a daily basis by simplifying all 316 degrees of hiring process. Based on artificial intelligence, CV Parcel allows recruiters to use more than 20 features like fast sourcing, screening, competency mapping, reporting, and all recruitment internal process automation. More than that, to be a part of HR Global Digital Transformation, we have invented the first global HR recruitment seamless recruitment terminal that allows candidates to apply on their convenience using their mobile phone or their resume copy. We have placed the, those terminals in retailer strategic location like lobby of their head offices or entrance of the stores. The same terminal can be mobile and used by the employees when participating to employment forums. Tell us a bit more about your solution and how does it help local retailers? First of all, I would like to thank you for this interview, allowing to highlight the skills of our local Moroccan companies, including eSolution, and their capacity to respond to the needs of the local and international markets. eSolution is a Moroccan information technology consulting and system integration company, headquartered in Casablanca and Rabat, Morocco. We support our public, public and private clients and their digital transformation projects, especially before and during the pandemic. We do have a variety of solutions targeting several areas of business activities, like customer relationship management, uh, supplier efficiency management system, procurement and sourcing solutions, electronic uh, signature, e-learning, document management, as well as HR management system. The solutions help local retailers to achieve their business goals and grow highly competitive environment. We assist them to automate and optimize the different processes to increase productivity, to facilitate internal and external communication with customers and suppliers. Also, it's to achieve an integrity 
of their information system. Our, all our solutions are secure and user-friendly platforms. Our journey at Technopark ends here. We had the possibility to visit those two great companies that actually helps retailers. Unfortunately, we couldn't see all the ecosystem here at Technopark. And we definitely recommend all retailers and all the brands to come and check what Technopark companies and this IT uh, infrastructures and young entrepreneurs has to offer. November 2018, His Majesty King Mohammed VI inaugurated Al Buraq, a $2.1 billion investment to become the first country in Africa to launch the high speed track. This train that travels at more than 320 kilometers per hour linked the two key major cities of Casablanca and Tangiers. The high-speed train cuts the travel time by health and made it possible for Moroccans and tourists to move more efficiently within the country. As soon as you leave the train stations, you will notice the existence of new projects that include leisure and retail shopping centers. Back to Casablanca, we have visited Alpha Place, a unique retail project by the Atlantic Shore. The project mix of shops, hotels, and luxury residences made this mall a popular destination among Moroccan and tourists. This mall was an opportunity for new brands to penetrate Morocco and offer their products and services to more than 5 million city residents. Alpha Place was the second mall to open in Casablanca. Tell us a little bit more about this unique retail project. Yeah, so Alpha Place opened back in 2013 in this, the heart of the city of Casablanca by the seashore, so it benefits from both. Very uh, well located in the city, with the great access to, uh, to, the, to the ocean. Um, so the visitor of Amfa Place can benefit from an indoor and outdoor area, um, with a direct catchment area that is really uh, dense, because Amfa Place is the first shopping mall that opened in a mixed-use project, with the residences, but also offices and uh, hospitality, with the first uh, Four Seasons of uh, Casablanca that opened uh, at the same time and the Hotel Pestana as well, uh, in the same location. Um, Alpha Place, um, when it opened, uh, came with a, a new offer in the city with the, uh, a lot of um, brands that uh, choose Alpha Place as their first home for their development in Morocco, uh, but also with uh, this uh, outdoor uh, area that is a real uh, component of the whole experience. So basically people, they come here for shopping and at the same time for entertainment, yeah? Exactly, so the experience at Amfa Place goes way beyond shopping. It's really a place for gathering, socializing, creating emotions, memories for families, for kids, for friends, you know? And this is really something that uh, our strategy, uh, when we took over the center as uh, the, 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 the manager, the asset manager of the center in 2015, this was really the, the axiom uh, on which our strategy was uh, put in place, if you want. And, uh, and uh, we, we um, advised the landlord that had just acquired the, the center at the time uh, to focus on this in terms of leasing, but also in terms of marketing and offer. 
Um, so I, I don't know if you know, but Enfa Place opened in 2013, but in 2018, 2019, uh, a big refurbishment of the center happened uh, with the rebeautification of the common areas, but also with some very heavy works where the customer journey was optimized with the single loop in the second floor, with the refurbishment and rebeautification of the food court. So there is a really a before and after of the food court of Afa Place uh, in terms of experience and uh, look and feel, but also in terms of offer, where we try to bring a new way Way, uh, of uh, consuming a food court with some uh, healthy choices at the same time as the usual suspects that uh, we uh, generally find in food courts. And this make it the, the favorite food court of, uh, of Casablanca when you ask visitors. between the shore and Casablanca famous Corniche. The experience is excellent for both families and shoppers here at Enfa Place. This shopping mall includes a kids entertainment park, local and international retail brands from cosmetics to clothing, groceries and consumers electronics with a wide choice of indoor and outdoor food and beverages locations. So tell us, what's, what's coming next for AMS? What's the near future of AMS Capital in terms of retail? So, uh, yeah, uh, so AMS is, is a real estate asset manager. We work on uh, all kinds of asset classes, retail, but also residential offices, logistics, uh, even data centers uh, recently. Uh, but indeed, we are uh, now on the market recognized for retail as well because of our experience at Amfa Place, but also because we, are, uh, we have been the strategic advisor, uh, the leasing agent, and the future asset manager of the retail component of M Avenue. It is the mixed-use project, uh, the first of its kind in Morocco, but also in Marrakesh, which is a great, great um, mixed-use project, including a retail avenue, but also uh, Four Seasons residential uh, branded uh, residence, uh, res uh, high-end residences, a hotel uh, from Pestana with CR7, uh, a business school, a bank, uh, um, a clinic, an M art. So it's really the kind of project we see elsewhere that now has been built in Marrakesh uh, that we will uh, open early July together with the landlord. So we're working on the retail component of that project. Um, and we have been working with the landlord since 2014 when all this was an idea and we worked together to make it happen. Uh, we also uh, work with uh, Imcan, uh, a UAE developer that is developing uh, a big mixed-use project in Rabat by the seashore. And this is also a, a first in Rabat. Uh, and we're working on the retail component uh, of, uh, of Le Carousel. Uh, no, the retail component called, is called Le Carousel and the, uh, the, the project as well. Um, we also work on a couple of projects that are still confidential with uh, institutionals here in, in Casablanca. Based on your assets management experience, what does it take to manage a shopping center like Enfa Place? Actually, it takes uh, a lot of uh, uh, experience around the table in terms of uh, team management. So uh, a shopping mall like, uh, like Enfa Place can be managed directly by the landlord or can be fully externalized to a specialist or can be done hand in hand uh, between the management team of the center and uh, an external um, strong advisor. So what happened for Enfa Place is that AMS has been first the manager of the center, the asset manager of the center, on, like on behalf and under a mandate granted to us by the landlord. And uh, this lasted five years. And after five years, um, the, the, the landlord decided to internalize part of the management, uh, more on the technical and operations uh, uh, part. And we kept all the leasing and strategic uh, and marketing um, mandates. Um, so today we are the exclusive uh, leasing agent of the center, um, as well as the marketing advisor and strategic advisor of the landlord for this center. And it takes actually, as I told you, um, a lot of resources and experience, uh, but also it uh, requires a lot of reactivity because 
Real estate in general is a long-term investment, but in retail we have to be able to move fast, uh, to adapt to our visitors' uh, requirements, to adapt to the new offers in terms of uh, retail, F&B, leisure, and be able to give space and grant space to every single new uh, kind of offers uh, that arrive on the market to be able to also uh, cope with this digital transition that is happening. Uh, we talk a lot about digital, so because we are a physical place, but we have to be able to go and bring our visitors from their homes to our centers, and this requires also a, a, a lot of um, strategy, and we rely also on a lot of uh, uh, digital expertise uh, from local agencies, but, but also international agencies, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, digital marketing, digital mar communication, um, in order to really be all the time uh, aligned with uh, our visitors' uh, expectations. So if I'm an international brand, for example, and I decide uh, to open a new shop, for example, in, mm -hmm. in, in Onfa Place, how your, your company will help me to, uh, to do that? Actually, we've, uh, as I told you, Onfa Place has been uh, the home of a lot of uh, first comers to the country. Uh, behind us, Marks & Spencer is, uh, opened its first store in Casablanca within Anfa Place. We have Calzedonia and Intimissimi. So Calzedonia and Intimissimi were uh, two brands that were uh, um, really awaited for in, in, in Morocco. Uh, and we met them a couple of times uh, in Europe through our network, international network, because we, uh, our main shareholders are in Europe and in the UAE. So we have access to a lot of international brands um, with whom we are always in, con in contact to um, convince them and to sell them the Morocco destination and we managed to do so with uh, with a couple of them and we're still working on it unfortunately covid has been a burden to a lot of discussions that were going on uh, to bring some brands but we don't lose uh, hope to to get them back now that things are getting better the moroccan consumer shopping habits are changing with time and the culture of convenience and diversity in offers has pushed many local retailers to review their way of selling as well their store layouts and ecosystems. Marina Shopping Mall is the third mall to open in Casablanca. With this new shopping center, Marjan Group is completely changing the retail scope of the country, moving from hypermarkets to a complete ecosystem where we bring completely new retailers and new brands to the country. Marjan Group was the first national player to change the scope of retail in Morocco. The company was the first operator to launch a hypermarket in the country in 1990. This was a major shift as Morocco is depending mainly on the traditional markets to reach the maximum consumers. Based on international standards, the Marjan Group's offering, layout and customer service can be benchmarked to what we see frequently in developed countries in Europe and America. Today the group has more than 37 hypers and 36 supermarkets with a total GLA of 230,000 square meters and more than 10,000 direct jobs. The group strategy took a big turn by moving from hypermarket structure to shopping center ecosystem where new deployment will be surrounded by shops and convenience services. This was done in Chashfin Center in 2016 and the launch of the Marina Mall in 2019. As the Moroccan consumers' demand is increasing, Margin Group launched Electroplanet stores in 2008 a consumer electronics specialist that offers a wide range of products with a higher in-store consumer experience and a strong online e-commerce presence. Today, with more than 27 stores in Morocco, 
Electroplanet is the leading of consumer electronics and the store is completing the group strategy for a very country retail ecosystem. The design of the Marina Mall is a mixture of modern infrastructure and a local touch from the country's history. With the presence of global brands as well as local retailers chains that focuses on the made in Morocco products like traditional clothing, leather handmade products and jewelry. IZIT have been here for more than 25 years and trained more than 1,000 engineers that supports the retailers on a daily basis. Today we're going to meet the staff and we're going to visit the school that actually helped into the improvement of the Moroccan retail. Is it? higher school of textile and clothing industries and under the Ministry of Industry and Trade for the Green and Digital Economy. We have been around since 1996. We are celebrating the 25th anniversary this year. The school is the result of a partnership between the public authorities and AIMA, Moroccan Association of Textile and Clothing Industries. It is a school that awards public diplomas in three cycles, engineers, professional license, and specialized masters. We also provide other missions in terms of business support in all sectors, industrial and service sectors. Also, the third is the research and development mission. Today, we have trained as 5,500 graduates who are in labor market and who operates in several sectors of activity with several different positions of responsibility. Several areas of expertise at school. Basically, the school was created to train for the textile and clothing sector. But after several years, we were able to diversify the school scope by training for other sectors of activity. Regarding the retail business, you should know that since 2005, we have implemented the first international logistics promotion in the engineering cycle. Of course, logistics training, which can be useful for everything in the field of retail and also purchasing and sourcing training and especially the master's degree in distribution and merchandising that we have launched in 2007, and we have trained 250 graduates in master's degree specializing in merchandising and distribution who mostly work in the retail sector. Merchandising and distribution is preparing the future executors for the markets of retails and distribution. The focus is done on all what could happen in the point of sale in terms of retail. So the meeting of the customer with the product, we're trying to optimize this, this, uh, this meeting with uh, giving very good uh, advertising in the point of sale, giving uh, the best layout that we can do, giving a big assortment of products, uh, trying to, to catch the customers, their attention, uh, playing with the store, the face of the stores, and also with the ambience via the sensorial markering. Of course, uh, today, with all the technology and the digital uh, aspects that we can have, we can't consider just the retail in the point of sale, but we should absolutely cross the online and offline acts of the customer to optimize the facts that we should uh, sell to them. Of course, uh, all the acts of merchandising, we can measure them in general via the turnover that we can do. And in general, it's treated by square meter, linear meter.
priority is it to take care of uh, research and development of the uh, textile sector in uh, collaboration uh, national and international uh, with the uh, research uh, center and uh, laboratory for more than uh, 11 years. Already is it uh, department uh, have uh, you know, working daily basis to support development and uh, new uh, and innovation uh, projects. Already is it is represented by two laboratories. Remtex uh, is uh, specialized uh, in uh, advanced textile. Celog uh, is uh, specialized in uh, logistics. It has its own way to prepare its students for the market of retail. The first skills they learn is to master products. Uh, it means that they should know how to conserve products, how to make them, and how to, to improve them. The second skill it is management, the basics of management. So they learn how to plan, how to organize, how to improve processes, and so on. In addition to these two core competencies, uh, we work with our students on the soft skills. So they learn how to motivate, how to communicate. Uh, we have uh, some lessons on uh, team building, on uh, leadership. Uh, this uh, help students uh, to assume their function of uh, responsibility when they become uh, managers or designers. Uh, at the end, there is uh, an internship when they practice all the things they have learned at EZIT. And they are judged uh, on the gain of performance they bring to the business. This is the way uh, is it uh, prepare its uh, students for the future. We have visited CIB, a Moroccan textile group that employs is it competencies and managed to transform the company from a simple producer to a high standard retailer. La société et compagnie industrielle de bonneterie existe depuis 1946. The industrial hosiery company has existed since 1946. It's a 100% Moroccan company. It is fully integrated textile and clothing company. We import from the thread. We have the different stages in the production of the products which are knitted first. We are equipped with circular loom and rectilinear loom. We are equipped with the knitting and the yarn dyeing site. Therefore, we have the service of cutting, screen printing, and tailoring. This experience was so enriching that we decided five years ago to create our own network of own shops and online sales site. Today, we have a brand called Partners, which we are capitalizing on. This brand is present in supermarkets as well as the traditional markets, in our own shops and on our online sales site. Why did we choose this? We want to get closer to our consumers and to know their real needs and respond to them in a more precise way. I encourage industry colleagues to launch their brands and get a little closer to their consumers. Developed on the site of the former Casablanca Anfa Airport, the Casa Anfa project covers an area of 350 acres with more than 100 acres dedicated only to green spaces. It's made of residential towers, offices, and as well the new Casablanca financial districts known as CFC. With this city mega project, a new mall called Area Mall is being built. We have met with the developer of this strategic project to know more about this new concept. The 
in a few months, Casa Alpha will become the new modern downtown of Casablanca. From a retail perspective, what's coming to this new community? Before answering the question about the retail, I would like to say a few words about Casa Anfa, which is the new downtown of Casablanca, uh, over a total area of 350 hectares. The city hosts not only residential, but also offices and retail. Park has been developed by Anfa Realties. Anfa Realties, which is a, a real estate um, developer here in Casablanca, Morocco, with uh, residential projects that are concentrated in Casablanca with three different types of residential um, construction, uh, which is, first of all, households, uh, households that are looking to expand with larger, larger space. Instead of living in a small apartment, looking for a larger space for their family, for their children to be able uh, to play in a, in a secured residence, in a secured co compound, and accompany this amazing project, which is uh, uh, Casa Finance City. Casa Finance City is the new financial district in Casablanca, Morocco. This will be our financial hub, and it's, uh, we're very proud to be able and accompany this uh, prestigious project. We've seen that there's a lot, of, a lot of banks and financial institutions coming here as well, yeah? For sure. I mean, all the bank headquarters are going to be transferring to Casa Finance City. Uh, in other words, their headquarters are mainly based in downtown old Casablanca. Uh, this is the opportunity uh, for considering it is a finance hub uh, to gather around all the banking sector in one unique uh, place. So what we have here in front of us is uh, one of our largest GLA space, um, which, going, which is going to accommodate a supermarket. The most important thing here in Aeria Mall is to have a, a mixture of commodities, of offers. So uh, as we have smaller spaces for, for smaller shops, we're, we're considering uh, larger spaces as well for either supermarkets or uh, shops with need of larger space. Very good. Uh, and in terms of space, you're offering those spaces to local brands, international brands? Oh. There's a mix of everything. I mean, we're, we're wanting to if you want, uh, give, give the opportunity for Moroccan brands to develop themselves uh, um, as within, within the small as well. We're giving them the opportunity uh, for them to be present. But we're opening, we're opening the, the uh, if you want, uh, the mall to international brands as well. Why do you think it's important for international or local brands to be in Casa Anfa? Well, as I mentioned before, uh, Casa Anfa will be hosting Casa Finance City, which will have uh, an international dimension. So in terms of positioning, we strongly believe that the local brands, and as well as international brands, should be positioned and uh, located at Casablanca. How Area Mall will transform the retail scope and the retail image for the city? Well, to answer that, I would like to share, you, to share with you a bit of, of, of the history of Area Mall. Uh, with the teams, we've been working on that project for the past four years. We're with international uh, architects and consultants, which are specialized in the retail industry. And we have come up to the conclusion that uh, retail is not, no more about transaction. It's no more about buying a, a good or a service, but it's about an experience. In only a few months from now, Casa Anfa will change the image of Casablanca and it will position the city as the continent leading destination for both business and shopping.
shell and core to ready store. Sopromar helped many retailers during their deployment process, and we have visited their factory to learn more about that. On a accompagné plusieurs sociétés marocaines et internationaux au fil des années, ça fait plus que 20 ans. We have supported several Moroccan and international companies. Sopromar has been around for more than 20 years. We operate in several sectors. We are in high technology and telecom, the IT and ready-to-wear sector. Our strong point is the material we bring from abroad. These are certified materials with very high requirements. We have invested in human capital. We have a very experienced team. Our design office is one of the most important pillars at home. In the company that helps us adapt the charters and the brand guidelines. And we can even develop these designs thanks to our design office experience. We apply the plans to the letter of large multinationals with all desired requirements. By aligning the international standards to the local market demand, Sopromar has been engaged to master all phases of a new store layout. From wood to electrical and paint, by integrating the retailer's design standards required in the blueprints by brands. This helped many global retailers in their successful launch process in Morocco, as well local players who seek assistance from Sopromar to design their new store layout, optimize the space, and create an outstanding customer experience inside their stores. To Marrakesh, the city that counts three modern shopping centers today, will add a new unique retail project to the list. Dinamol is a, a quite unique project compared to what we have seen so far in Morocco. Mm -hmm. um, this project is a kind of a mix of a modern and a traditional place for, for local retailers and as well for international brands. Can you please tell us a little bit about this unique project here in Marrakech? Yes, of course. So the Medina Mall Marrakech is a new shopping center concept with 34 shops and restaurants that aims at creating a unique space for exchange, discovery, and ballads um, between tradition and modernity for Moroccan and international visitors. Our goal is to stimulate entrepreneurship among young people, especially women, support Moroccan brands, and encourage Moroccan artists by offering them more visibility through the high traffic of our strategic position. The challenge was to perpetuate a thousand-year-old Moroccan history without distorting it, and use the Moroccan heritage and craftsmanship to create a modern infrastructure in the heart of the old city of Marrakech. I was going to ask you the question. I think it was quite difficult for you to find space within the old Medina and to get basically all the approvals to switch this, uh, this area from, from centuries of yeah. Moroccan history to, uh, to a new modern shopping center inside. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, I think it took a, long, a lot of effort to convince people in here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The journey started five years back uh, with the support of all our uh, local authorities and our neighbors that were really, uh, really happy to see a new face of, uh, of the Moroccan uh, history take place in, uh, in here. And um, we tried to reshape, to reshape this neighborhood and uh, 
bring more opportunities for, uh, for Moroccan brands that were looking for modern infrastructure in the Medina. But uh, there, was a, there was a lack in the offering. So we tried to fill this void. So we tried to make a mixture between tradition and modernity through the choice of the ochre color, the arcades, the musharabie, the vegetal elements around which the stroll is made, as well as the use of to the traditional techniques of painting and the know-how of the Moroccan craftsmen. When this project will be ready for, for people to come, it looks a very exciting project and we definitely look forward to, uh, to come and see the final result. When, when this project will be ready for us to visit next time? It will be ready by December 2021. Over the past decade, Morocco improved by more than 50 places its position in the World Bank's Doing Business Ranking. In 2020, Morocco ranked 53rd of 190 countries. Growth in the retail sector is spread-headed by Drawage Vision 2020, a government strategy launched in 2008 that was intended to position the country as a commercial center with a high-value-added retail segment. With all have been said, the country's development relay on the vision of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, the 12th century strong history and culture without leaving behind the warm Moroccan hospitality. Our journey ends here in Morocco. It was a wonderful experience to meet some of the structures that managed to change the scope of retail here in the country. Thank you for watching Morocco Retail Evolution, and I will see you in Moscow. <laughs>